Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's the Museum Saturday again here at the Rupert Museum. And we're lucky enough to have our guest cur curator, Yasin Naidu, talk through the Any Given Sunday exhibition, as well as just giving us some background into you know, what went into the project and the scope of the project, which seems to be continually unfolding. To give you a little bit of background of Riaz and Naidu, who is currently based in, in Paris, he is an independent curator, researcher, and artist focusing on modern and contemporary Africa. He was born in Durban and graduated with a BA and MA in fine arts from the University of Advertisement Johannesburg. Initially practicing as an artist, Naidu has since 2004 curated exhibitions that highlight overlooked South African and African art histories. Exhibitions highlights include in the, in the Parisian suburb of Saint-Denis, as well as Any Given Sunday, the 1910 to 2010 Google uh, Google Collective, which was quite an incredible exhibition at the South African National Gallery, the Indian in Drum Magazine in the 1950s that toured into uh, institutions nationally until 2011. He curated exhibitions on artist Peter Clark's work shown in Dhaka, London and Paris between 2012 and 2013. And on photographer Anjit Kali's work shown at the Durban, uh, shown in, sorry, Durban, Johannesburg, Cape Town, Bamako, Saint-Denis, Union Island, um, and Vienna and Barcelona. So he's, he's got quite a, quite a repertoire under his belt. He's co-curated the 10th edition of the Dakar Biennale in 2012. He was the director of the South African National Gallery in 2009 to 2015, as well as the director of the Timbuktu Manuscripts Project, which was something really quite, quite special as, as, a, as an African to another African. Um, uh, it was a wonderful thing to see that unfold. And he managed artistic projects at the French Institute of South Africa, taught drawing and painting at Wits University, and was in charge of art education at the Durban Art Gallery. And I know Riasen for a very long time, so I know him even since, since that time. So, <laughs> so welcome Riasen. Sorry, I, I had to give you a full bio because there's just so many aspects of that, I think, that also speak to where you are now and, and the projects that you're working on now. So uh, over to you, um, you can take it away. And for the audience, there is the chats and comment section. So you can put any questions in there and later on we'll see if there's a bit of time to, to talk through that. Thanks, Riasen. Thanks very much, Robin, um, for that introduction. Yes, we... <laughs> We know each other since 2009, so that makes it 12 years now. Um, I'm gonna just share my screen quickly. Um, yes, I have enabled that. Okay. Right, let's see. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes of the presentation. Yes, I see lots of, I see one through eight at the moment, so. Right, lots of little squares. Okay, good. There we go, yeah. Okay. So, I'm just closing this box. So I'm gonna give you quite an informal uh, presentation of any given Sunday. Um, I have, I was telling Robin that I've, this is the first time I'm actually speaking to a South African audience. Since the project was curated in 2016, I've made presentations in um, a number of cities around the world, um, including Zurich and Dubai and Gothenburg in Sweden and Accra in Ghana and uh, Venice and Glasgow. Uh, Paris also. And so um, finally, any given Sunday, I give a talk to a South African audience. And I must thank the Rupert Museum for um, hosting any given Sunday in the museum context. Um, and also for inviting me to give a presentation of uh, the project to you today. So 
let's see what we got. Um, so any given Sunday came about, I was approached to curate a, a public art project. And it was the Institute for Contemporary Art Research in um, Zurich that uh, were putting together a project called Draft, which was looking to invite nine curators in nine cities around the world uh, to curate public art projects in their cities. And this involved uh, curators in Mumbai, in Hamburg, in Zurich, in St. Petersburg in Russia, in Cairo, Mexico City. Uh, it was initially meant for Johannesburg, but I shifted it to Cape Town. Um, and there were also um, some other cities. Uh, oh, Hong Kong, uh, I forgot as well. No, there were nine cities in total. And um, the idea was for it to be uh, multidisciplinary and also to work with a team, you know, to, to have different kinds of ideas and to come up with a project. And each team was given the same budget and um, a year to realize the project. So the, um, the main sp sponsors were the Institute for Contemporary Art Research and uh, they were partly sponsored by Pro Elvisha, but uh, many of the other sponsors and partners I um, initiated and brought on board to the project. Also in terms of some of the support partners uh, mentioned uh, below, you know, for the concerts and uh, for some of the venues, uh, you know, Silly Kamva High School in Hout Bay, for example, uh, for Zanele Maholi's um, talk to uh, matric students. So um, we started off any given Sunday on the 15th of May with um, Bukhle Bezwe Siwani, who incidentally has just won the Standard Bank Young Artist um, of the Year Award. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Bukhle. And I should say that uh, Gabriel Goliath also won the Standard Bank Young Artist uh, Award. Um, and Hassan and Hussein Esip also won it. So we have quite a few Standard Bank Young Artist Award winners uh, on the project. And some of them were on any given Sunday before winning the Standard Bank um, Award. Uh, Bukhli's, um performance was quite interactive. Um, I'll come back to that. Uh, that took place in Kailicha. Uh, we also had uh, Zanele Mahole uh, on the project, uh, Gabriel Goliath's uh, Elegy, uh, Gerald Machona, uh, which took place in a factory, uh, Stembile Mesazane, uh, Burning Museum, uh, Hassan and uh, Hussein Esop, Koleka Putuma, who's a poet. So we mainly had visual artists, um, but there was also a poet, and there was also Madusini, um, who, you know, the famous musician, whom I, I believe performed at the Rupert Museum uh, recently. And it was a real privilege to work with Madusini. You know, she's so humble and so talented. Uh, and we did four concerts with Ma Madusini. This one was a totally unplanned uh, one um, in a square just around the corner from where she was living in Langa. And it was just, you know, impromptu. And we just took a walk around the corner and found a square and she started performing and it immediately drew an audience. So any given Sunday um, was also inspired by the Fees Must Fall protests of 2015. And in this photo uh, taken by Wandile Kasibe, who 
you know, works at uh, Zico Museums and organizes the summer program, summer school programs there. Um, we see also Justin oh. Davy on the extreme left from Burning Museum and uh, Stembile Mesizani next to him. This is uh, the protest in front of uh, parliament. These are some images from uh, Feast Must Fall 2015. So what is the relevance of uh, Feast Must Fall to any given Sunday? And I think it comes down to um, obviously access um, to education, free access to higher education. But why is that important to any given Sunday and to art? And this touches very much on, um, you know, my own experience growing up um, under apartheid, growing up in a township school in Durban, um, in Chatsworth. And I was fortunate because the school that I went to was one of the few black schools that actually taught art um, at the time. So um, even though I was painting and drawing on my <clears throat> own before, before being officially um, schooled in art, um, you know, I had some access to art education and, and that piqued my interest. And uh, later I studied fine art at, at Wits University. But the idea is that a very small percentage of the population in South Africa uh, goes to art museums and has um, a basic art education. Um, that doesn't mean people are visually illiterate, uh, but you know, in, for, for much of the contemporary art today, or even modern art, um, the feeling is that you know you need to have a background in art history to be able to interpret and to appreciate uh, the arts that's shown in museums. And uh, this is something that I uh, felt very strongly about uh, because some of my first, um, you know, my, for example, my parents' first experience with a museum or a gallery was when I was working at the Durban Art Gallery and I invited them for some of the openings. You know, it was a very foreign uh, space for them. It was the first time they entered into an art museum. And um, when I had an exhibition of my paintings um, at the NSA gallery in Durban, it was the first time they came to a commercial art gallery. So these spaces were quite foreign and uh, quite intimidating for, you know, to, to much of the public that uh, had not been initiated in art education mm. and art museums. And, and um, you know, there was this air of intimidation and alienation, we can say, um, in these spaces. But for me, I felt very strongly that art um, can transcend these, um, these borders. And, and that was the idea with Any Given Sunday, to take art into the public space um, and, you know, to see how people uh, appreciate and engage with um, art that is uh, in the space that, that um, they are sharing. So this was, for example, Koleka Patuma. This was uh, Stembile Mesezane in the company's gardens. Uh, Koleka Patuma's um, performance of poetry was on a train from um, Cape Town city center to Musenberg. It was a 45 minute train ride. And along the way, we also had uh, a musician join us in the carriage, which complicated things. But this is back to Stembile Mesezane in the company's gardens, Government Avenue. Uh, and that is again back in Kailicha at the Kailicha meat market, Sanele Mahole. Uh, these pictures that I'm showing you, what it, 
what I want to say with it is that there was an emphasis on the public. You know, uh, often we place a lot of emphasis on the artists. There's this whole notion of the artist as a genius and uh, museums and galleries really go out of their way to give artists the attention they need and to show their work the best uh, in the best way possible. But for me, uh, the public is equally important. And with any given Sunday, the emphasis shifted uh, to the public. Stembile Mesazani, again in Companies Gardens. And I should also um, emphasize that the people that you see in the photo, the public, were just people who happened to come across the performance that was taking place. So the artist, only the artist and I um, knew what time the performance, what day and what time, and when the performance was taking place. So it was, it was kind of secret, it was covert. We did not uh, have a program uh, that was publicized in advance. Basically, the documentation of the performance was posted on Facebook after the performance. So the idea was that I did not want to draw on the same um, art public that um, that we find you know, coming to exhibition openings. I wanted to expand the public, the public's uh, plural, to um, people who would encounter these art uh, works and these performances in the public space in a random manner. So I wanted to enlarge the pool of the public that uh, you know would appreciate the artistic interventions. So the, 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 the people that you see in this photograph standing around Stembile Mesezane uh, came across this intervention purely by coincidence and quite randomly. And this is still in the company's gardens, Stembile Mesezane, which drew uh, many admirers. This is um, Buchle, uh, again at the Kailicha meat market. People were very curious, wondering what's going on. And this was, uh, you know, this was Zanele Moholi's intervention, which took place at the Cape Town train station and taxi rank upstairs. Um, so Zanele Moholi's intervention uh, was drawn from her series Somnyama and Gonyama, which she's been working on for many, many years. And I think there's an exhibition that opened this week at the Stevenson Gallery, where she's made some new shifts towards sculpture and painting, uh, so expanding her repertoire. But um, for this, we used some of the existing photos um, in her oeuvre, and this is what it looked like in the project. What was really interesting is that with Zanele's uh, photos, people really loved them on the street immediately and wanted to be photographed with the images. Uh, so uh, many people found them quite beautiful. Uh, some were even stolen um, one or two hours after. Um, but in a way, it was a compliment to Zanele. And um, she, she, was, she was there. Uh, she had to attend a, um, a pride meeting that weekend, but came in as we were installing the last of the photos and joined us. And she was quite thrilled to be part of the, um, the installation. And I think what's really interesting with, um, with installing these works like 
you know, visual works in the public space is that when you're installing, uh, it draws a lot of interest from curious um, onlookers. And we had the same experience with Neuf um, Trois in Paris um, recently. So a lot of people are very curious. They want to know what the image is about. Um, you know, who is it by? You know, what is the intention of the, the project? And um, Zanele, you know, quite uh, enjoyed that as well. Uh, we made a good use of Zanele's um, presence in Cape Town that weekend. She was around from Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And um, Sunday, we, you know, we installed the artworks because the project is called Any Given Sunday. So the idea was that, um, you know, these interventions would take place on Sundays or on a public holiday uh, because I felt there wasn't much going on in Cape Town on a Sunday. Um, sometimes I would uh, DJ um, with some world music at a bar called Tagore's in Observatory. And uh, Sundays were like a dead day in Cape Town in terms of culture. And so that's how the name came about, Any Given Sunday. And the randomness of the, it would not be every given Sunday, it would be any given Sunday. So the, the title incorporates the randomness of the interventions on Sundays. And so that's, you know, it took me a while to come up with that title. And when I eventually did find the title, Any Given Sunday, and was looking for a Facebook page for the title, I saw there was also a movie named Any Given Sunday with Al Pacino. So I was quite disappointed that the title already existed, but uh, Any Given Sunday came out of uh, thinking about the objectives of the project, that there were going to be these random mm -hmm. encounters on Sundays, which were then also extended to public holidays. And here, um, Zanele Maholi um, gives a talk on the 23rd of May, which was a Monday, to matric uh, school learners at Silicamba High School in Hart Bay at three o'clock. Uh, and the students took really well to her. They saw her as a role model. And, uh, you know, she spoke to them about um, gender issues and uh, show them examples of her work. And they were very open and, uh, you know, it was a great reception of her work and she wanted to continue doing and working <clears throat> with that school. And I see that Zanele has since uh, been working a lot with younger school learners um, in some of her projects. Uh, if, if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see that as well. This was five years ago already that we did this. Uh, Stembile Mesizane, I, I won't talk to all of the projects because there are nine and, um, but just to say that there is the Facebook page called Any Given Sunday Cape Town, Any Given Sunday comma Cape Town. And you can see all the interventions. There's a lot of videos. The whole archive of the project is on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, just to mention, uh, with Zanele as well, she gave a talk at UCT at the Institute for Creative Arts with uh, Jay Pather. Uh, that was on the Friday uh, before the Sunday intervention. So she gave a talk to university students and, and the broader public and then to matric students. And then we did the intervention on the Sunday. Uh, Stembile Mesizane's intervention took place on June 16th, which is uh, Youth Day, public holiday, as you know. And it took place in the company's gardens in front of uh, the South African National Gallery and in close proximity to the statues of Jan Smuts and other public um, statues uh, in the company's gardens. And as you, those of you who are familiar with um, Stembile Mesazani's intervention in um, 
any given Sunday, um, her series was about the absence of uh, black women monuments in present day South Africa. So, you know, making the point that if we look around South Africa, there are very few changes in terms of public monuments uh, acknowledging uh, black uh, women heroes. And, um, you know, she, her interventions are aimed at um, addressing this absence and this marginalization through her live performances, which last about two hours. So she was on this plinth uh, in this performance called the Charter, uh, where, you know, the drapes that flow from the bars across her shoulder um, are the Freedom Charter from 19, you know, the words from the Freedom Charter from 1955, which were conceived in Kliptown in Johannesburg. What was really interesting about this uh, intervention was that um, she also had some markers and people could, um, could write on the plinth, you know, their thoughts uh, to what was happening. It, it was really um, a lovely response from the public, you know, young kids across, um, uh, across race uh, were all interested in uh, what was going on and the, the public as well. People were engaging, they were writing their thoughts Ah, oh, there we go. We do have something about what uh, was written there. But you can see this on Facebook uh, if you want to go further. Uh, Gerald Machona, this was a very interesting performance as well, very different. Um, Gerald conceived this piece and um, this was the third uh, performance of Influx. Just one or two days before, <coughs> Influx was performed at the Institute of Creative <coughs> Arts at UCT. And I was, um, you know, I wanted to do this in a public space that would uh, correspond with the performance that related to textiles and related to xenophobia. And I'm going to show you a short video of uh, Gerald Machona's performance. I'll, I'll talk, I'll talk over the video.
So just to talk a little bit about this, because this was a very important um, intervention in any given Sunday, uh, I had found, um, you know, um, but just to just to hold it on one of the images here. Let me just go into. So just to um, say that I was trying to find a textile factory uh, to host the the performance. So. I visited some textile factories, but I also contacted the, the textile union that then assisted me and, uh, you know, uh, found a, a factory that would, uh, was willing to host the performance. Um, you know, as with factories, uh, people were concerned or the owners were concerned with losing time and losing production. So, um, this was done during a lunch break for the workers of the textile factory. And, uh, you know, as the performance uh, was very much about uh, foreign tailors working in South Africa, issues of xenophobia, you will hear, you would have heard uh, in the sound, Gerald Machona created the sound. So what you heard, the music that was playing in the background, was created by Gerald Machona, who um, you know, has a past of uh, music design as well. And he uh, incorporated sewing machines and uh, you know, that sound into his sound performance. So it's, it's a quite a complex uh, intervention uh, performance. Uh, he collaborated here with um, Pak um, Njamina from Mozambique. So, which was funded by Pro Alvisha uh, Southern Africa, you know, that seeks to uh, put Southern African artists um, together uh, for collaborative um, pieces. So that was funded by Ant and uh, Pak and Jimena came over for a weekend mm -hmm. to Cape Town. Um, but you had, uh, Pak and Jimena is a dancer and choreographer in his own right. Uh, Gerald Machona is more known as a visual artist. Uh, you know, he did his um, masters, I think at Rhodes and then came to University of Cape Town. Sorry, he did his masters at Cape Town and I think he did his undergrad at Rhodes and was, was also doing his PhD at Cape Town um, a few years ago. Um, and then you have the sound design and you also have the context of the factory, of the textile factory. So, uh, you know, this was definitely one of the more uh, successful interventions in that all of the ingredients and layers uh, of interpretation uh, in this performance came together. And I think also the, the public that we addressed, the, the you know, the textile workers, was um, very important uh, to making this a very special intervention. Um, I see there's a, is there a question in the chat, Robin? <clears throat> That's, I've left a comment also just to the people within the gallery space as well as anybody else to actually leave any comments or chat. So that's me that you've seen. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. So, um, then uh, very quickly, Burning Museum, you can see why I won't be able to talk to everything, all the projects, because um, you know I need about three hours to talk uh, in detail. But this, I'll show you also Burning Museum's uh, Strat Prikes, uh, which we made a short video of. And 
Birding Museum is made up of uh, four artists, Justin Davy, Tasneem, Wenzel, uh, Jared Erasmus, and Grant Jurius. And, um, you know, they collaborated here with Sarah Yapi and um, Atiya Khan and mu musicians Riza Kota and Garth Erasmus. And I'll show you, uh, sorry for the, the break in the video, but that's because I'm playing this uh, via my uh, PowerPoint in my in um, my Hotmail account. So So for each of the interventions, we made a short video of about two minutes, two to three minutes. You know, to record it and as an archive of the project, because the project was very ephemeral. Um, some of the artworks would not last more than a day in the public space. And in terms of performances, they would just be one or two hours and then there would be no trace of the performance. So the, the documentation, the photography and the video became an important aspect of um, guarding the archives of the project so that five years later, I can show it to you by an online presentation like this. So Burning Museum found a score by Abdullah Ibrahim entitled Burkhap. That's what you see uh, them putting up there. The, the intervention is called uh, Yomasa Tao, referring to um, Afrikaans and also the shared um, language with people from who originally uh, came from Indonesia and those who came from Holland uh, and this kind of weaving of um, Afrikaans and the Arabic script because some of the first instances of Afrikaans are recorded in Arabic script in the Cape. And the music by Riza Kota and Garth Erasmus was meant to follow the, the score of Burkhap by Abdullah Ibrahim, but it was also improvised. Um, in the moment. Um, I'll go through some of the other highlights very quickly. Uh, Gabriel Goliath, which was not, um, Elegy was not part of Any Given Sunday at the Rupert Museum. It was the only um, intervention that was not uh, shown at the museum. But here are one or two stills from Elegy. There's a video on the Any Given Sunday Cape Town Facebook page, which you can have a look at. Um, and in this instance, this, you know, Elegy was first performed at the Goodman Gallery in uh, October, November, 2015. That's where I first saw it. And these are stills from that uh, performance. Um, so seven singers, um, you know, in a kind of continuous uh, morning and uh, Gabriel Goliath initially worked with uh, professional singers from UCT's uh, music school. Uh, they are all shown here, the seven singers. And for any given Sunday, 
um, the idea was to also work with some of the singers from the um, Langa Methodist Church. Um, so it was a combination of the classical, classically trained singers and um, some of the singers from the um, Methodist Church. An elegy was a sound performance that. Um, Collectively enact uh, a ritual of mourning. Is the sorry, I'm gonna try and do it from my end, but if those participating can also just mute themselves, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and this was initially meant to. Elegy was initially meant to honor the life of Ipaleng Moholane uh, and was centered around the issues of uh, gendered and sexualized violence. Um, and for any given Sunday in Langa at the Methodist Church, uh, the, the singers were made up of both classically trained uh, singers and the, some of the members from the Langa Methodist Church but you can have a look uh, more in detail on the Facebook page. Here are just one or two more photos. You can see the singers uh, up, getting up on a little plinth uh, on the top right corner. This was done at the end of a Sunday church service. The video is quite, um, is quite good and gives you a lot of information. You should check that out. Uh, we already spoke about a little bit. This was a, an interactive performance and um, she was working with issues of um, being a Sangoma and the reactions of the public uh, towards Sangomas. And she had four um, enamel bowls in front of her um, that were filled with different contents, each of them, uh, one with soap and water, one with cow dung, one with ash, and um, people could then choose uh, which of those substances to either put on her or to clean her with. And, um, you know, according to how they felt about some romas. So, um, this was also on a Sunday, it was, the, it was the performance that kicked off any given Sunday, which was on the 15th of May, 2016. And it was at the meat market in Kailicha. Um, Hassan and Hussein. So, uh, there's a video of their performance that uh, took place uh, in uh, Sea Point, and it was the sighting of the new moon. So, uh, if you've ever been to Sea Point uh, at the end of Ramadan, um, you will see uh, people, you know, with their picnic baskets, uh, the Muslim community waiting for the sighting of the new moon. Unfortunately, when we did this, the weather was absolutely terrible. It was stormy, it was raining. Uh, the moon could not be adequately sighted. So, um, you know, people were listening in on the radio to hear whether the moon was sighted uh, in other parts of the country, like in Johannesburg. Um, but you can see the full video of that um, on the Facebook page. Just very quickly to talk about some of the influences for, uh, for me as a curator. In 2001, 2002, I had worked with the French activist artist called Ernest Pignon Ernest. And I worked with him for 18 months in South Africa. At the time I was uh, employed by the French Institute of South Africa in Johannesburg to work with the artist. Um, and he made three trips to South Africa. We, we made a lot of research trips around the country. 
uh, at the time, uh, HIV and AIDS was uh, a huge issue. Lots of people were losing their lives. And the artist works in this guerrilla uh, kind of way. So he made the drawing uh, using models in the studio in, in Johannesburg, uh, taking photographs and then working from photographs. And it was based on the image of Hector Peterson from June 16, 1976, which you see in your top left corner, inspired by that. And um, the idea here was that, you know, women were, the, were supporting the, the families, um, AIDS affected families during this time. But the way he works is to, to make a drawing and then to print it onto newsprint and in the middle of the night, we would, uh, you know, stick these on to, you know, uh, covertly stick these uh, around the city. Um, so that really introduced me to public art. That was 20 years ago, uh, 2001, 2002. Uh, that project took place in Durban in Warwick uh, Junction. So near the taxi rank and the, the bus rank, the train station. About 600,000 people pass through that train station every day. Um, and the other artist that influenced me was Peter Clark, working with Peter Clark, getting to know him, uh, because Peter Clark was largely ignored by art institutions in South Africa. And um, he nevertheless documented and chronic, chronicled, uh, you know, the community around him first in um, in Simonstown where he was born. And then later when his family was moved to Ocean View, he just kept making art. He, you know, he, it was also for the people around him. Uh, it wasn't about the validation of institutions or museums for him. It was, his art was really linked to the community and the people around him. And so these two artists, I would say really, um, influenced me um, in you know conceptualizing any given Sunday who who is it for who is the public is art only limited to museums and to museum going public does it have a wider reach uh, can people enrich them their lives with art even if they don't have an art history background even if they have not learned art at school or um, learned art at university or studied art. So these were the questions that um, I was asking myself uh, when I conceptualized um, any given Sunday. Thank you. I'll stop there. Um, Robin, we can take questions or any comments. Yes, thank you very much. Wow, that's that was really enriching, just getting a, a great understanding of the project's roots and just a wonderful overview of the different artists and, and, and the elements. I think it's, it's quite broad how you've managed within that project to include so many different types of, of art making. Um, just a couple questions that we've got on the ground here. One was, were these artists compensated for their participation in the project? I suppose that's the original, the original project. Okay, shall we take all the questions uh, and yes. then I'll answer? Yeah. Sure, okay. And then one on the, just on Burning Museums project, wondering if those murals are still on the buildings. It's been a while since 2016. Okay. And then uh, another question just on public engagement, seeing as these are events that happened, were events that happened with, you know, no program in place and feeding off a public that was of passes by, was there any issues of either negative feedback or you know, difficulty with, with the audience? Um, how did you negotiate an audience that might have been um, maybe disinterested or, or confused by, by what was happening? Um, that, was, that was another question. And then a practical question was, um, sorry, I'm getting some of these from different sides here, was the city itself and in the process of 
not just planning the projects, but also, you know, your COVID going in and, and setting up things. Um, how did you, did you go about permissions first? Um, was the public, sorry, was the, the, the municipality or whatever having issues? Did you have to endure any kinds of like fines or how did you negotiate, you know, working in public spaces and setting things up um, with, with it being unlawful or not? I don't know if it was unlawful, but it, it was, you know, by uh, guerrilla tactics as it were. So that was another question. Um, yeah, so I think we'll that's okay. covered already. <laughs> That's already four, yeah. Let me take them. Um, firstly, the artists were definitely compensation, compensated. The artists were paid in uh, a fee. And, um, you know, in the case of individual artists, uh, of course, each artist was paid uh, a fee, which they were, uh, you know, we came to um, something that they would be happy with. It was generally the same across artists. In some cases, like, for example, Gabriel Goliath, um, there were a number of other musicians. So it wasn't just Gabriel, but it was also uh, a production because there were seven singers as well to take care of. So they, you know, in that case, um, there was a, an additional budget. Burning Museum is also made up of uh, four artists. So they got a little bit more. Uh, to compensate for four artists. And um, Zanena Maholi also gave a number of talks and she um, traveled with a team that were in Cape Town for then three or four days. Uh, so we organized some sponsorship with the hotel. We got some reduced rates, uh, et cetera. But the point is that all of, all of the artists were compensated and uh, were very happy with the compensation. I think it's important that artists are compensated uh, because it, you know, these are professional artists, they earn their living from their work. So this is also important for me as a curator. Uh, Burning Museum, those interventions are not there anymore. In fact, that building was, uh, I'm not sure if the building is there anymore, uh, but we do have the video and we do have the images so that you can see on the Facebook page. Um, did we have any difficulty um, on the project? Look, um, the, the idea of the project is not only that people will respond positively, that's impossible. It's like when you have an exhibition in a museum, not everybody is going to like the exhibition. And the idea is not to convince people to like it. The idea is to uh, make an intervention in the public space. And for people, you know, we're lucky if people are affected by it and react in some way, whether positively or negatively, it doesn't matter. But that reaction means that the work touches them, that the work, uh, you know, that it, it touches them in some way that they react to it. And we saw, um, a number of photographs of people stopping to look at, for example, Stembile Mesezane, we, you know, Gerald Machona in the factory, you know, there are numerous examples, Zanele Mahole. Uh, but we weren't looking for compliments, let me say, or I wasn't looking for compliments, and I don't think the artists were looking for compliments. Once you place things in the public space, you have to be open uh, to it receiving all kinds of reactions. Just to give you an example on Neuf Trois, now in Paris, uh, some of the artworks were tagged. You know, people wrote on the artworks. Uh, sometimes it's a compliment because people want to be associated with the artworks themselves. They want their names associated with the artworks. So it can be seen as a compliment. Um, so in that sense, we didn't have any difficulty. You know, uh, in most, I would say, 99 or even 100%, we had a positive response with any given Sunday. People were uh, curious and they were delighted to encounter something that was not expected, uh, that was a surprise for them. Um, and, um, you know, we, we had a very good reaction uh, generally. Um, and then 
uh, Robin, I know we're running out of time and you probably have some uh, wine tasting to do or something after. <laughs> but um, the last question is about permissions and the gorilla um, way of working. This is, uh, any given Sunday was no doubt a gorilla art project uh, inspired by, you know, people like um, Ernest Pino Ernest, who's been making art like this since 1960s. And there is a video on the Any Given Sunday Facebook page where you'll, it's in French, unfortunately, but they kind of celebrate 50 years of his interventions in the public space. Uh, people like Banksy come after Ernest Pino Ernest. They do not ask for permissions with the city. Um, and so any given Sunday did not ask for permissions. Uh, also with Koleka Patuma's performance on the train, we got onto the train and she did the performance. Uh, some of the difficulty was that um, there was also another performer playing his guitar over mm. her poetry. And, you know, so she moved to another carriage so that um, she could focus purely on her poetry. I actually found it quite poetic this kind of music accompaniment to her poetry. It was, it, it, it was a kind of Masakanda uh, guitarist and it worked very well. And it um, makes so much sense because in the train, there are always buskers, there's always people doing stuff. So it's, it just would have made sense as part of what happens when you're on the train. <laughs> absolutely. Sense. No, no, I found it quite, uh, quite poetic. Um, but uh, for any given Sunday, we did not get permissions. Uh, although I must say for Paris, uh, Niftra, uh, which I will talk about uh, in another month or so to, to the audience, um, we had to get permissions because the city was a partner on the project. And we also had to get permissions with each of the sites, um, you know, because some of the images stayed up on the sites for two to three months and now going on to four months. And uh, the city even assisted to put us in touch with some of the, the traders or the shop owners or the libraries. Uh, but for Neuf Trois, which is inspired by Any Given Sunday, Neuf Trois is a project that I'm currently curated in Paris. Um, we had to get permissions um, for these. And in a way, it's quite good because when you get permissions for visual artworks that stay on for longer, uh, people protect these images in a way. They take ownership of it. So uh, it, it's not a bad idea to get permission. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, we do have to wrap up, but perhaps I can have one more kind of question just on um, more how this type of, of art that is supposed to and actually functions uh, centered on um, an uh, unassuming public that, that passes by. For this now to several of the artists you mentioned that have won um, Sander Bank Young Artists of the, of the Year Award that are in commercial galleries producing work prior to any given Sunday, as well as since. With that sort of thing happening, how do you, how do you experience that exchange almost back into the gallery space and white cube? Um, do you feel that it then takes the new publics, you referred to the different publics, does it take those new publics into the, the formal art space where they might previously not you know, have engaged? Or are you finding that it takes them then away from, from the, um, the broader um, engagement that they would have had originally with public spaces and taxi ranks and factories and that sort of thing? Do you think that there's still a feedback, um, back and forth rather, I would say, between those kinds of spaces so that um, each space is actually growing from the engagement? No, absolutely. It was never the intention to present this in a gallery or a museum. So, um, and I must congratulate uh, you, Robin, and your team for the installation 
uh, I've seen the photographs. I've not seen it in person because I'm in Paris, but I've seen the photographs and they look great. I think you guys did a, a great job of assembling uh, objects and uh, videos and photos, uh, you know, to, to recreate any given Sunday and to show the traces of any given Sunday, you know, almost each uh, intervention in, in the museum space. So for me, it's really a compliment that um, any given Sunday is getting the recognition by an institution and it, it's, it grows the audience, you know, uh, so it's always about, uh, you know, people that are interested to, um, so it's never about shutting out an audience, it's always about growing an audience. So whether it's in the museum space or whether it's in the public space, that's, uh, that's both great. And it's, I think what's really interesting about this is that it's first in the public space and then in the museum, when normally you show the, you show the exhibition in the museum and then you try and you know, do what they call like art education and you try and uh, take a you know, art bus around or you know, um, you know, to the townships and uh, to places where people are not coming to museums. But this works conversely because this first put the priority on uh, people in the public space in townships like Langa and Kailicha and, um, you know, Madison, Madusini also performed not only in Langa, but also in Guguletu. Um, and recently and with us at the Rupert Museum as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget. <laughs> um, but, you know, it first took place in all of these public spaces and and then comes to the museum so i think that's a great marriage that's uh, it's lovely to see it in the museum uh, now because in a way it it gets a kind of acknowledgement from the uh, institution that you know what took place in the public space is um, is equally important and has something to teach the, the institution yes um, just an observation from my side. Um, I found it really interesting that, like you said, this project is, is almost the streets educating the formal museum space about what's happening in terms of art and in terms of artistic intervention. So, so that was, was interesting for me. And then also that we wanted to recreate an experience that had already happened. So we took the traces that you referred to. We took the videos, we took the stills, we took um, remnants, um, uh, buchles, um, scrolls, she calls it, that she wore over her shoulders when she stood as a, as a, as a monument herself um, in company gardens. We took all of those traces and we, we put it in the space. And what we found was different was that we had an exhibition that, that didn't have like a, a beginning or end that allowed the viewer to navigate their own way through the, the, the exhibition, navigate their own experience. So there were so many bits and pieces to include in the exhibition that we could only focus on certain elements in a physical space because we had a formal exhibition space where we had to set lighting and accents on certain things which you'd think then there'd be a disjuncture but what actually happened is it created an interesting thing that people would come through and then they could read and they could choose to go onto social media to check out a particular video so as you go through you actually almost curating your own experience through what had happened with any given Sunday. And I think that's one of the most interesting parts of, of us having hosted this exhibition that came through, I think a very different, um, a different set of, of criteria of what is, what, is, what is art and what is artistic intervention. Um, it's something that the museum has to look outwards to to kind of learn from so so yes i agree that it's it definitely benefited on both sides very much a, a very good kind of marriage of of understandings of art um yeah so i think we should probably wrap up 
Ryasin, if you have any closing remarks. I don't see any further questions coming through on the chat. Yes, I do have some closing uh, remarks. Uh, one is that we are, I'm very busy with the Any Given Sunday publication. And we are hoping to get that done and out to the public by the middle of December. And um, hopefully we can still launch that um, while any given Sunday is on at the Rupert Museum. Um, so that's something to look out for. It will have essays and interviews, um, essays by quite a few uh, renowned scholars from around the world, and also interviews with almost all of the artists in the, uh, on the project. So that's coming out soon, and that will kind of be an, a, quite a nice closure uh, for any given Sunday um, as a project. And there'll be more to read and more detailed and scholarly information uh, on any given Sunday. More insights into the artist's thoughts uh, on their interventions in the project. Thank you once again, Robin, and thanks to the Rupert Museum. It was great. Um, I also enjoyed Thank the presentation. Yeah, with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You shared some interesting, unique bits that add more to what you experience in the space, which is great because now we've got it available. Um, we would like then people to make as much use of it as they can. Um, if they check out you know, our Instagram page, Facebook and so on, they'll be able to also access the, this video and, and have a good listen. So thank you very much, Ryasin, for, for your contribution, as well as for future contributions, because we'll be working closely with you, hopefully, um, in the future as we go along. And um, yeah, um, I'm sorry that you, you can't be on the side in South Africa with us, because of course now we're going to uh, have wine tastings. I'll definitely be coming for that uh, <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks very much.